Hello and welcome to a bit of an unusual retro core today. Um, retro in the fact that we're looking at old style audio equipment. Now I did do a video on a CD player a while back and some of you liked that and you'd like to see more audio equipment videos. Well, recently I've just got this into the collection so I'm going to show you how good audio tapes actually are. Now let me take you through a quick tour of the items on top. You can't see it. We've got a sound blaster um, sound card which connects to the PC and everything from this entire system can go through to the PC. Up here we've got an Onkyo graphic equalizer, then we've got the Onkyo amplifier with a built-in AM FM stereo tuner, and then we've got the brand new item. This is a TIAC audio deck. This is the V1010, and below that we have got a TX CD player, that's the one that we featured on the show last time. And over to that side, we have the good old Sony, yep, record player. Okay, but the star of today's show is going to be the TX tape deck. And what I'd like you to see is, or what I'd like you to hear, is how good audio cassettes are. Now, when I was a kid, I used to use audio cassettes all the time because, you know, I was mostly into music in the 80s and audio cassettes were the way you recorded stuff. And yeah, uh, audio cassettes get a bad rap of sounding like crap and that's because we used to use cheap boom boxes. Now while this may not be the highest end of all audio equipment, it is fairly good. And it will make your tape sound pretty decent. So uh, first of all, if you're watching a 4K you should be able to see this. We've got Dolby B and C noise reduction on this as well as HX Pro. Now HX Pro isn't a noise reduction technology. Uh, basically what that does is give you more headroom on the tape so you can record uh, a lot louder. HX Pro is always on by default. Now this is a three headed audio deck or cassette deck. And what that means is it actually has an erase head, a record head, and a play head. Now normally the record head and play head are in the same head on a standard cassette deck. But with a three head system, you can record and monitor what you're recording because the play head is after the record head. So you can hear pretty much instant instantaneously what the audio cassette is recording, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing that makes a good audio cassette sound good is the bias. And here you can adjust the bias and basically this tunes the signal going to the tape so you get the best signal for the type of tape that you're using. This machine can use standard ferreric, um, metal tapes and of course chrome tapes. One nice feature about this machine is it actually has a real-time counter on it for the tape so you can actually use real-time instead of just the standard uh, counter numbers which is pretty cool. And here we have our record input, balance, and the level output. Now I've got the sound going from the tape deck directly into the camera, so hopefully you'll get a good uh, idea of what it sounds like. This button up here that says MPX filter, basically that is for when you record off the radio. It does something to take away interference from the uh, stereo FM signal. And over here we have our Dolby B and Dolby C noise reduction switches. But I'm not going to use any Dolby today. I'm going to keep it all off. All right. Okay, so let's talk about audio tapes. Now, I've got quite a few audio tapes here. And here's one of them. This is a TDK MA metal position. Yep, 4 CD. These are very nice cassettes. Not the best cassettes in the world. There are even, you know, really expensive cassettes. But these ones are very decent. But I will be using that one today because uh, this is pretty expensive. So I'm going to save that for the good um, item to be called on. Then we've got these. These are Axia tapes. Now Axia, believe it or not, is Fujifilm. Now in the West, Fuji actually released cassette tapes based upon their own name. But in Japan, they're labeled as Axia. That is their tape brand. And these are fairly uh, end of the line cassettes before uh, you know, cassettes were phased out. Come in slim cases and so on. There's no gra graphs on the back of anything, which is a bit of a shame, but you can see the Fujifilm logo right there. 
Now, the thing with Axia tapes or Fujifilm tapes is they always looked cool. I mean, really cool. They made some of the best looking cassettes ever made. You know, even better than TDK stuff. Uh, talking of a TDK, we've got more TDK. Um, now, in the West, especially in Europe, we had the uh, CDing range. Well, in Japan, we also have the CDing range as well. But uh, they are a little bit different. See, in Europe, we have the CDing and CDing 2, from what I remember. Um, as a teenager, but I never ever did see the CDing 4. But yeah, apparently that is a thing. We got a 54 minute one and a 60 minute one up here. And these are metal tapes. The uh, Axio ones, which I just showed you, are chrome. So we get metal tapes here. And they have a very unique case as well. It's a slim case, but it actually opens up, as you can see here on the diagram. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, but I'm going to be using one of the Axia tapes for this because uh, they are the cheapest ones I have. Um, uh, here's one of those Axia tapes opened up and as you can see, beautiful looking tape. I like the way on the case they actually have the Axia logo embossed onto the case right there. It's lovely. Can you see that? Alright, um, the J card inside the case is kind of interesting. It's actually quite tiny, but you can fold it open to write more stuff onto it. And of course you get your little uh, sticker sheet as well. So there's the J card. But yeah, talking about the tape, let's take a look at it. Look at that, isn't that thing a beauty? I really do like the style of Axia tapes. Um, these bits here, they're actually indented. So it's not like a sticker or anything or a bit of ink. It's actually indented into the plastic and it looks really, really cool. All right, so I've already set up this uh, machine to record onto this tape. Now keep in mind that these are not the best tapes in the world, but they are fairly decent. So let's pop it into the machine and see how well it records audio. Now, since we're putting this video up on YouTube, we can't record any copyrighted music. So we're gonna record some game music. Yep, then and at least for the Mega CD. So here we go, let's put this into the CD player. Now I must point out that the amplifier and the graphic equalizer do not color the sound anyway uh, going into, this, into the cassette deck. The signal going into the cassette deck is completely raw. Well, is raw the right word? But anyway. It's not colored by anything. There's no equalization or anything going into it. It's direct audio, as it's uh, meant to be, as the audio files say. Anyway, let's get the CD up and running. So we're gonna start off with the source over here, so you can see there. So when you see this, that means you're listening to the CD. And when you listen to, well, when it comes up as tape, I should say, that means you are listening to the cassette. And we are going to keep uh, Dolby switched off. So Dolby C there, Dolby B there. Actually, I'll tell you what we'll do as an ex as a little experiment. Um, I'll uh, put Dolby on at the beginning so you can hear the difference in noise reduction. You'll hear the hiss get taken away. Okay, so uh, let's put it onto tape and hit the record button. Okay, so it is on pause. Let's take the pause off. Ooh, that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's give that another try. All right. So right now you can hear the hiss from the tape. That's because there's no Dolby switched on. Let's switch on the Dolby B. Yeah, that's a little bit better, isn't it? But there's still some hiss in there. So let's switch on Dolby C. Yeah, now that's pretty cool, isn't it? But we're going to turn off all the Dolby for this recording. And what we're going to do now is go back to the source and let's start the CD. All right, let's go. That's the C 
CD playing. Now we're going to monitor the tape. The sound that you're going to hear when this switches to tape is directly from the tape. Ready? Here we go. Now obviously the levels are a little bit lower, the volume level, because this tape you cannot push it too hard. If you uh, turn the record level up, you're going to end up um, distorting the audio. That's where one metal tape will come in, push that harder. Okay, back to the source. pretty good eh not so bad now obviously the CD is a little better but considering this is a fairly standard chrome tape it is a pure chrome you can smell it, it smells like cra Crayola cranes a little bit so I think I'm pretty sure it's a pure chrome and not a, a ferric cobalt dulped uh, uh, dulped a ferric cobalt uh, dulped Doped. <laughs> can't, even, can't even speak English anymore. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's not one of those tapes. I'm pretty sure it is a pure chrome. Actually, let's, let's take a look at it. Um, see what color the cassette is, the tape. Uh, as you can see, the tape is pretty dark. So yeah, let's have a smell. Yeah, that, def that definitely smells of Crayola crayons. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is a pure chrome tape. Yeah, okay. So I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm going to record something onto this tape and then play it back to you. Hope you enjoy it. Let's play a track from the Mega CD game Night Striker. <laughs> 